Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me. This is Anna from Craft Me A Card and I love crafting for the crafter and that is you. <laughs> All right, so for today's Wacky Wednesday, I wanna share with you guys a project that I am going to be uh, sending in for a challenge and this is for an MDC challenge. What is an MDC? Well, an MDC is really a memory dex card. And what is a memory dex card? Ha ha! <laughs> this is a Rolodex. This is a very old Rolodex. I found this Rolodex in my parents' garage and it's very vintage. Um, back when secretaries would look for information on these cards, phone numbers, addresses. So us crafters have found out a way to use these Yoo -hoo. lovely cards that were once used for storing information that are now obsolete and create wonderful art on them. So when you see that somebody is hosting a memory dex challenge or an MDC challenge, it's a memory dex card. And usually they are uh, four inches wide. If you don't have uh, a memory dex, you can create one. There are different ways to create one, of course. Uh, anyways, just wanted to share that. Super cool. You can create one, of course, uh, with a metal die. And this was on Amazon. And I bought this one also. This one was also on Amazon. And another way you can create it is just by purchasing this metal die where it just creates the little holes where the memory decks goes in and then you just uh, punch it at the end of your cardstock to create the memory decks. You can also, of course, cut one manually. Big deal. Cut one manually, do two punch holes, um, and then you, you've got a memory decks. Um, so what I'm going to be doing today is decorating one of these cards. And I went ahead and I used this one here. This has like for a pull tab, but I took this part off and I created um, my memory decks that I'm going to be decorating. And this challenge uh, for Karamia is, um, it has to be a memory decks card decorated in a Christmas way. And uh, again, I'll put her information below so you can join in the fun. So this is what my memory decks card looks like like now that it's cut. I don't know if I'm going to be using this or a pattern piece of paper and cut it out of my pattern piece. So anyways, we will see. Okay, so I've decided to use this stamp and cut set by Hero Arts and it has this chimney that you can die cut and then you could add a lot of little things to it. You have cookies, milk, stockings. So I'm just gonna add the stockings and the fire for the fireplace and I'm going to be stamping Sending warm wishes. I like that little stamp. And this set is called Winter Hearth Stamp and Cut. Okay, so here is my chimney, all nice and cut. You could see the little grooves that the die cut creates. And I'm going to be coloring it. Okay, so I'll bring in my placemat <laughs> from the Dollar Tree. And I'll bring in my little chimney here. Let me zoom you in. And I'm going to be using the Distress Oxide Ink Weathered Wood to color in my chimney because I want the chimney to be more white, like if it was a white chimney. So I just put a little bit of this ink on my mat. I get a little uh, water brush here. With that water, I just like to spray a little bit of water on the side of my ink. Then I grab a little bit of water, go into the ink, and just bring it in and go around the edges of what um, are the bricks. And then, grabbing more water, I dilute that to give it that more rustic look. And wherever I want a little bit darker, I just go in and I grab less water. When I wanna lighten it up, I grab more water and I bring it in. Now, I think that if I would do this again, I would have grabbed some watercolor paper because this is regular cardstock. Seems to be working fine, but the pigment is not moving as smoothly as I would like. But this is still gonna work, so I'm not going to discard it. But only, um, I do recommend using some watercolor paper for this. You just go in and you color all the little 
bits and pieces here, all the surrounding of the bricks to give it that 3D look. And the beauty of these inks is that you can use them as watercolor, as I'm, as I'm doing here. Of course, you could use watercolors, you could use watercolor pencils, you could even use Copics. It's just that I feel that this is a lot easier and it's so easy to manage. And it gives it a good, good dimension. So just like this, I go over all the bricks on my chimney here. Look at how fun that is. Doesn't that look fun? <laughs> I like, I love how it looks. Okay, so now that we've got our chimney cut and stamped, I'm going to work on my little book. And to stamp my boots, I'm going to use black VersaFine, Onyx Black. And this clearly says here, perfect for using watercolors to color stamped images. So I'm gonna use VersaFine. And just like that, I go ahead and I stamp all my booties. And when you're done stamping, don't forget to clean your stamp. And I use this clear stamp cleaner, and this is by Ranger, but you can find many other brands for stamp cleaners. I first want to cut these out before I color them because a lot of times when I cut, they don't come out right. <laughs> so I don't want to throw all that work away. So first I'm going to go ahead and cut them. So once the metal die is placed, I'm just going to hold it down with some washi tape just to make sure that it doesn't shift when I run it through my uh, die cutting machine. Okay, so now to color these cute little stockings, I am going to do it with pens. And these are gel glitter pens. And Rebecca at Paper Crafting with Rebecca, also here on YouTube, showed where she was using uh, pens to color in her little images. And I was like, that's a great idea, especially for these little tiny little images. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to start off with this red and just color these lines in. Now let's zoom you in. So I'm just gonna come in and color one line in and leave one line white. And look at how easy it is to color these little tiny images with these gel pens. Thank you so much, Rebecca. If you haven't seen Rebecca's channel, I invite you to go over. She's a great crafter and a great friend. Okay, so just one and one. See, and I'm just gonna leave that like this and because these are glittery, it gives my stocking a little glittery effect. See that? And I like it because it's subtle. It's not a very bright red because <clears throat> this is what I want to use for my backing so it goes perfect with that color. So now I'm going to do this one and I know I want to color that tree green. So yeah, try to use stuff that you already have in your craft room and maybe in your home even. Okay, then I'm going to color these lines in red. Just like that, super easy, super fun. Taking advantage of what I have. Sometimes we invest so much in our craft items that we forget what we already have. And something as easy as gel pens. <laughs> Very good. There's our stocking. I am content. I am content with my three stockings here. Okay, so we have other little images here to play with. And let's do some fire. Okay, from the same paper, I cut my little boots out. I'm going to go ahead and stamp these. Okay, first, let me do the log with Black Onyx VersaFine ink. Let's do just regular white cardstock. Beautiful. And I think, yeah, there was a brown gel pen. Then on some parts I'm going to go over it just to give it some shading. There's our shiny log. Okay so for the metal that goes underneath the log I'm not going to color it. I'm going to emboss it. And I'm not going to use VersaFine. Instead I'm going to switch over it to VersaMark which um, is made to last wet longer. 
and that helps you do your embossing. Before I apply my ink onto my image, I am going to go over it with an anti-static powder. Um, and this is an anti-static powder tool, which is a little bag and it contains a bunch of like little powder that helps take away anything that is wet so that your embossing powder only sticks to where you are applying the ink to. So I wanted to emboss it with something gray and there are these embossing glaze that I got uh, from Tim Holtz. I was really excited when I got them, but I haven't used them. So I know that they're glaze, they're more of a transparent color, so I'm going to also make a mixture with this uh, detail black embossing powder. And this is a La Mode uh, by Hampton Art. These are super old. I don't think that this container could be found anymore. But anyways, I'm going to mix a little bit of each. Please use what you have on hand, just whatever black embossing powder you have. And this can also be done with the just plain black. It doesn't have to be gray. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab this little container I have here. And since this is not a lot, we don't need a lot of embossing powder. So I'm just going to do a little bit. A little bit of each then let me go ahead and mix these up so I want like a dark gray and then just mix it mm -hmm. here you are dear the mixture you were waiting for absolutely thank you so very much all right so now I'm gonna bring in my log and my Versamark stamp my log holder <laughs> I don't know what this is called and carefully stamp it like if it were holding the log I think that is good now I'm going to bring in my mixture and sprinkle it over okay perfect look at that wonderful and see my embossing powder only has stuck to the places where I stamped so now I'm just gonna go over it with my heat gun just to melt the embossing powder Ah, magnifique. Okay, so now for the flame. I'm going to try festive berries. Wet it and place it. Nice. So then I'm going to bring my very top piece of the fire. I'm going to go in with fossilized amber. Bring in my little stamp here. And stamp it right on top. Aww doesn't show. I'm going to bring in some acrylic paint <laughs> and this is from a toy that my daughter's got like one of those paint by numbers. I'm gonna use it. Just do some fire. Let me zoom you in. Oh I like the use of this acrylic paint. Okay so while that dries I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and I'll bring a cutting mat in. And using the crafter's knife, this is by We Are Memory Keepers. Going to go ahead and cut my log. There is my log. Now I'm going to cut my flame. I'm just going to add some glue and place it right there, right in the middle. I'm going to stick this up with thin mounting tape and add a little bit of glue then mount this on here this is kind of like floating so I'm gonna go ahead and ground it then I'm going to use walnut stain just like that and then as always add a little bit of water and that and that acts or helps to be like uh, watercolor so I'm going to try with some black soot that is just too, it's too caramelly. Right. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? So of course I stopped recording. <laughs> but anyways, all I did was go ahead and um, mount these on the MDC. Just went ahead and added some thin foam adhesive to add some dimension, but not too much. I don't want to make it too bulky. I think it's, it's it has the perfect dimension to be able to place in an MDC uh, holder. So there is that. So I just want to add some lights and some fuzziness and make it look a little um, more finished. So let's see. 
Okay, so I wanted some kind of greenery to it, like a garland. But what can be so tiny? So I found this uh, pipe cleaner that's really fuzzy and it's a nice color. It's not that bright green. So I think it'll work great for this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a garland that's kind of like loopy. And just press and form. It's a good thing about pipe cleaners that they're easy to maneuver, to form, because they have that wire. And yeah, I think that's cute. Just go ahead and clip it off. Put some glue. Don't cool off on me, don't cool off on me. I see this here, I do want some um, lights. I think that'll look cute also. So let me go ahead and cut this out. Okay, so here are my lights. Very well. So I'm going to bring in uh, just a strip of photo paper. So see, there's the shininess to it. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring in a drop of Limeade. just with the brush going to spread it around and then a little bit of watermelon just a drop I don't need much open your wings and fly and sunshine yellow then just go ahead and spread it around just let it dry because these are not like the oxide inks these do need to dry in order for them to stay Okay, now with the Incy Beans little light bulbs, I'm going to go ahead and cut each one of these colors out on the die cutting machine. So now coming in with my glue gun, I'm going to go ahead and stick these lights on the uh, garland. Very carefully, not to burn yourself. Like that. Stay, please, stay. Just like that. How cute. So now, I'm going to use some Jewelit glue, only because I will be dealing with photo paper. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of Jewelit on each one of these light bulbs, and then place the light bulbs I made using the photo paper. Grabbing a little bit of glue and bringing in my light bulb. Super cute. Look at how cute they look. I don't know if you guys can tell. But they have a little shine to them. They look like little light bulbs. Super cute. So I'm just going to do bunny ears. I'm going to do the bow that way. Just nice and simple. And just put one of the bunny ears through there and pull. Tug. It's a tug and pull game after you do that. And keep tugging. Pull. Pull. Tug. Oh my goodness. That is adorable. <laughs> it's super tiny. I think the string helps a lot in making these bows so cute. So tiny. So I'm just going to place ah, a little bit and then place my little bow on it. Love it. Love, love, love. Isn't that cute? Look how tiny that is. Okay. So to finish it off, I'm just going to add Sending Warm Wishes, that stamp there. And I want to place it on a tag. Okay, so for my tag, I want to use this. It's a McGill, and I got this from Oriental Trading Company. Okay, so for my tag, I want to use the same piece of paper I've been using for this whole memory deck. So I'm just going to put my stamp on this stamp block. It's acrylic. There are many sizes of those where you can mount your stamps and put it on my stamp here and stamp it. Voila. Okay, so then I'm going to place it in. Arr, see my finger? It doesn't go all the way and, and then to fuss with it trying to make it fit doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is add some washi tape just to make it longer. So I place it, let's see, I'm gonna place it here 
And I'm just creating a handle just to make it easier for me to maneuver in there. So there we go. So then I center it, straighten it out. Before I press it, I make sure it's centered. Then I cut it out. All right. So thank you very much, a washi tape handle. To the rescue again. But I want to distress the edges. So I'm going to use some antique linen. And this is a distress ink. This is just for distressing, of course. I use either vintage photo or uh, what is it? Tea dye uh, distress ink and also antique linen. Actually, antique linen is one that I really like. I really like the uh, the color it gives and I, I've forgotten I had it because <laughs> I was using vintage photos so much. But they're all great. They all work perfect for this to distress. Okay, so there it is. So to be a tag, I need my little hole there, right? So I could run a little bow through there. So let me grab a hole punch. Here's my hole punch and this is a 1 16th of an inch. So it's a lot tinier than your regular hole punch. So then just place it right in the middle of that area and look at that, I got my little hole. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in some ribbon. This is really thin. It's 1 8th of an inch in width. So I'm just gonna go ahead and see how I could pass it through <laughs> through that little hole. Okay, and I'm gonna cut this at an angle. That'll help me thread it through. This tiny little hole here. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's absolutely gonna fray on me. Maybe I should have burnt the edges, but anyways, let's do this. Yes, not too bad. So I'm just gonna do a little a little knot here. Again, I'm not going to do a bow because I already have too many bows going on. Let's just do that. Just like that. Very well. Then I'm going to cut these ends at an angle. And then I'm going to burn the edges to help avoid it from fraying any further. I am going to pop it up. All right. So then, as I always do, Add some liquid glue, even though this has glue. And then I'm just going to add my foam adhesive there. All right, so then just take out the backing and go ahead and add more glue. And I'm just going to add it right here next to the chimney. Sending warm wishes, very appropriate since we have the fireplace there going. All right, very cute. Um, there is something that I want to add and it's just some shine on this fireplace. Just want to make it pop a little bit more. And I'll use some glossy accents for that. Eh, just little strips, little lines, just for fun, for some added interest. See what I did with the glossy accents? You can barely see it, but you will be seeing it clear once it's dry. So I just went ahead and I wrote down on another piece of paper my information, my likes, my birthday. Um, and I distressed the edges and then I just stuck it to the back of the MDC. I don't know why I feel it looks unfinished and I think I know why. I am going to color in some floor here. I'm going to use some ground espresso. Just put it on my mat like that, add some water. Then go in with my brush, pick up some of that color. That's better. Yeah, see, now we have some ground. All right, there's my cute little memory decks that I'm going to be sending to Karamia. So yeah, go and show her some crafty love and I hope you are inspired. I hope you create and most important, I hope you are happy. And I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.
spread it around. Whoa, this has red. Oh, goodness, flip around. Photo paper. Uh, oh, the little ball fell off. Ugh. And bring in one of the little ears through. Ah, fail. 